Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, hey guys, welcome to another video for my Etsy shop and design team. Um, I want to start off the video by saying the design team and my creative friends this last few months and year have done a fantastic job uh, on their art, their channel, their creativity, and of course, helping me share and spread the word about my Etsy shop. I do truly appreciate them. You all know who you are out there. I will link the design team blog page in the video description. I encourage you to um, go and check it out and click on the designer's names and it should take you to their YouTube channel or blog page or whatever it is <laughs> I've linked it to, usually their YouTube channel. Uh, check them out, show them some love, uh, like, share, and subscribe, and all of that jazz. Many of them have ways you can support them individually in their creativity and their free content, not only here on YouTube, but over in the Facebook art groups. So I do encourage you to check out their channels and check out their video descriptions. Okay, all of that being said, why are we looking at this yellow piece of fabric? <laughs> so for those that don't follow me on social media, I'll bring a few of them over here. I've been consumed with the idea of slow stitching, which is just the new kind of more modern name for hand stitching or embroidery. I think of it as sort of a fabric collage, um, which it is. And instead of stitching it um, uh, on the sewing machine or gluing anything, um, everything is hand stitched with a, uh, for me with a variety of threads, um, including embroidery floss, silk buttonhole twist, regular sewing thread, whatever I happen to have handy that's the right color and an interesting texture, including sometimes yarn or crochet cotton and stuff like that. Um, I, of course, as you can see here, I add beads and buttons. Um, sometimes I add a word printed on fabric because my art usually is about words and um, um, telling some sort of visual story, usually with words, but not always. Um, what I've noticed lately is I'm incorporating bits from um, my shops. So this particular element is from a piece of fabric. I designed fabric over at Spoonflower, and this is from a, a piece of that fabric. You can order sample sizes of fabric, small swatches, and this is an element cut out of that fabric. Um, I have, here's another one. So this other one that I did has no beads on it, but the feather is an embroidered um, piece on canvas that I have had. I'm actually currently sold out on my Etsy shop, but the, pe the feather here I did on the machine, and then I do a whole bunch of these and I do sell them in the Etsy shop. I think we're sold out at the moment. Um, and then the, the words here, be fearless, um, I have a lot of digital downloads of groups of words. You can, of course, print them on paper or print them on sticker sheets, but you can also print them on fabric, which I've done here. And then I stitched it down. And I do have a video tutorial for that somewhere. But I don't really, I, if I can find it, I'll link it below. If there's no link, it's because I can't figure out what video it's in. But you really just um, iron a piece of um, thin co um, cotton fabric like muslin to a piece of parchment paper, um, I'm sorry, freezer paper to the waxy side. Um, iron it down really well, well and then cut it to eight and a half by 11 to fit in your printer and then you run it through the printer um, and um, make sure the edges are all very clean and that it's ironed down to the freezer paper really well and it should run through your printer just fine and then you can cut it apart and um, cut the words apart and use them in your art, or you can print some of my other downloads. Like I, There may be a digital download for this file. If there isn't, I'm going to be adding it to the um, Etsy shop. There'll be a few more digital downloads showing up um, over the next week or so, uh, so keep an eye on that. And you can take any of the digital downloads and also print them on fabric and use them in something like this. Um, these pieces are not intended to be washed or anything, so I wouldn't worry about ink running or anything like that. I, again, I do have a video and I am kind of, as I'm talking, remembering what video is it's in and I'll give you a link to the video tutorial on how to print on fabric in the description below. All of that being said, these are some of the fabric um, slow stitches I've done, fabric collages that I've done recently. And what I'm noticing doing these is there, I'm um, occasionally, like with this yellow one, 
it turned out really well. I love the way, actually love the way it turned out, but initially I was having trouble finding yellow fabric because I didn't have the right color yellow that I wanted in my stash. Um, and right now, because of what's going on uh, this year and with the stay at home orders, it's not like you can go out and just buy what you can't find or what you're out of. Um, if you don't know what I'm referring to, Google the year 2020. If you're watching this in the future, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, as I'm filming, this is the end of April in 2020. All right, so I figured out how to create some fabric that I can still hand stitch through and create what basically whatever color that I want. So this here is a piece of bandaging. Cotton bandaging, it comes in a roll like this. If I can find a link on um, Amazon or something, I'll include it in the video description. And I just cut off a, a small piece and then I got it wet and I dripped some ink on it. Now the ink will stain it good enough. And like I said, we're not gonna be washing these pieces. This happens to be um, India ink, so it's not gonna come out easily anyway, but these pieces aren't being washed. Um, if you are concerned about um, light fastness, you could seal it with a couple of thin coats of some kind of spray sealer. Um, you just wanna be careful about putting too much goop, goop, on it, making it too thick and stiff because it's too hard to stitch through. Not only if you're stitching by hand, but also if you're stitching on the machine, it's hard for your machine to get through lots of, say, acrylic paint. So I chose to do something more watery like ink. And I'm gonna show you, this one's dry because we're gonna do something else to it. I'm gonna show you how I did this. Should have left that there. Okay, so here's, I have a plate here with a paper towel on it. And we're gonna put a fresh fresh piece of that fabric. It's best if you use 100% cotton because it will hold the color better. I'm gonna spray it with, this is just plain water. And then we're gonna drip some of the ink. And then You can move it around a little bit. If you want it super well covered, then you would wanna make sure you cover the whole thing. I kind of like the unevenness, so I'm gonna leave that and you just set it aside and let it dry, probably overnight, and then you can continue on with the next part that we're gonna do. Okay, for those that don't know, I design and sew. Uh, rubber stamps and stencils in my Etsy shop along with digital downloads and original artwork and a lot of a lot more stuff. Um, I have a lot of stamp sets. I can't even put them all on the camera right now. Um, and currently they are all on sale 15% off. So um, just inventory reduction. I'm not going to stop designing or selling stamps, but I do have quite a bit of inventory at the moment that needs to move. So yeah, the stamps are on sale. Um, uh, we're going to take a stamp set, and I've had a particular one in mind, and this is set number, I don't know, oh, 11, and the set looks like this. So this is a pretty cool stamp set for doing what we're going to do with it. I think I'm going to take a couple of different ones from here. So we're gonna take this big handwriting one. I need to get a different color of ink. Hang on. Okay, normally in a project that you know you're gonna get wet, you want to use waterproof ink. Um, but like I've said, we're not gonna get this wet. So I'm not gonna to be too concerned about it. I'm gonna use a combination of waterproof ink, but also distress ink, which is not waterproof. Um, I have rusty hinge, distress ink and rusty hinge. I'm gonna take the handwriting stamp that's in part of this set and I'm going I'm not going to put it on a stamp block but I am going to get it nice and inky and I'm going to just let it give us some extra interest in our fabric piece here just like that okay then I want to take this one, and for this one, I am going to use a block. And I think I'm going to take black. This is black archival ink, which is waterproof. I'm 
you want to make sure your stamp pad's good and inky because the fab uh, fab texture of the fabric is uneven. It's not like a smooth piece of paper. Rock it just a little bit. There you go. So just like with creating a paper art piece or journal page, if you're working with fabric to create a collage and you don't have quite the right color or pattern or design, you can make one. We all have plenty of supplies in our stash with which we can do this. And whether we can get out or not, we should be using them. And now I've got this interesting piece of fabric that with which I can make a slow stitch. And I do want to do a slow stitch that I put on to a paper clip. I do like making art paper clips. And I've had this sort of bee in my bonnet about making an art paper clip slow stitch style. So I'm going to work on that and I'll be right back.
Okay guys, so this is what I was talking about. I'm really into slow stitching right now, but I and I'm also slowly running out of supplies or I just don't have certain things. And because of what's going on in the world right now, it's not like we can just go out and go shopping. What I did discover is I'm having a lot of fun rediscovering my own products, my rubber stamp line and other things and creating my own fabrics. Um, so this is the piece that we dyed earlier. It's just about dry and ready for stamping. This is the piece that I dyed yesterday and we stamped earlier in the video. And this is the finished paper clip that we created with it, which I absolutely love. And if you wanna know more about slow stitching, uh, I will be doing more videos on it in the future, but this particular project, the video in its entirety will be over in Patreon for the patrons over there. Um, just FYI. So um, you need to be a patron. It's not expensive. You can check it out if you're interested in supporting the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups. The link for Patreon is in the description below. You also, of course, can um, support by shopping in my Etsy shop or using my PayPal tip jar or any of those things. Uh, whatever works for you is greatly appreciated. Um, not needed, but appreciated. Um, there is some sales going on over in the Etsy shop and there's going to be more digital comment content coming um, soon. So keep an eye on that. And if you have other favorite creatives here on YouTube that you're interested in supporting, check out their video description. They probably have a way you can do that. If they don't have anything listed, uh, message them and ask. Um, it, it, almost all of us have something. So yeah, message them and ask. I'm sure they'll share. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe, stay home, <laughs> stay healthy, stay creative, and don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.